It's time for Michael Morales Torres and Lucha Libre Online. Saludos a toda la afición de la Lucha Libre. Este que les habla es Michael Morales Torres, integrante del equipo de Lucha Libre Online. Y tenemos el enorme privilegio de presentarles a nuestra invitada especial en la tarde de hoy. Gente de Detroit, Michigan para el mundo. Unos la conocen como Siena, otros la conocen como Alison Kay, ex campeona de las Knuckles, ex campeona mundial femenina en WA. Alison Kay is in the house here on Lucha Libre Online. Alison, it is an honor for us to have you as our guest. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. And I wanted to start this interview asking you, how did your passion for pro wrestling start? I mean, which was either the match, the wrestler, or the rivalry that engaged you enough to do this for the rest of your life? Oh, man. I started re watching wrestling when I was very young with my father. I don't remember much from the late 80s, but I do remember when I was about 10, 11, It's when the Attitude Era started. So I was, of course, an Attitude Era baby, very obsessed with the Hardy Boys and Lita and all of that going on at the time. And even before them, um, DX, you know. So I was an Attitude Era kid. I'll translate that. Eh, no recuerda mucho de los ochentas, pero creció viendo el Attitude Era. Ya como dice una niña del Attitude Era que creció idolatrando personas como los Hardy Boys, como Lita y ese tipo de, de dinámica que tenían. From being a kid that watched that watched the Attitude Era all days, uh, when did you took the decision that you were going to step inside a ring? So uh, when was that moment and how did you reach your first trainer? Oh, I remember when I was about 13 years old, I decided I was going to be a wrestler. Oh, wow. I remember I wrote a letter to myself and I wish I could find it. I don't know where it is. It's in my mom's garage somewhere, lost forever. But I wrote a letter to myself and I, the, to my future self, I... And it said something about um, like, you're going to be a wrestler. This is, I was making the decision that day. And um, I actually found my first trainer when I was 20. Um, it was through mutual friends. They hooked me up with someone in Detroit and I went to the school and now I'm here. <laughs> I'll translate that. Ella escribió una carta para ella misma cuando era una niña, 13 años de edad, 13 years old. Ahí ella decide que va a ser luchadora, escribe una carta que dice que tal vez la tiene en algún lado de, del sótano de su mamá perdida para siempre. Pero ella escribe esa carta, toma la decisión de ser luchadora y no es hasta que tiene 20 años que tienen varios amigos en común con una persona que está entrenando lucha libre, que es que entonces toma la decisión de hacerlo. What do you remember of that first horrible bump inside the ring? <laughs> One thing I do remember about bumping, I remember my trainer told me I was a natural with bumping. Oh. I feel like I got that down pat really fast. I'm not, I don't consider myself very graceful. Um, I'm kind of like a brute, I'm a brawler. But when it came to things like bumping, it came very natural to me. So I don't remember that hurting. I just remember, it, it's kind of a shock, but I remember that coming naturally. But I remember my first body slam. When I took my first body slam, I remember that hurting a lot. That just took the wind out of me. I'll translate that. Eh, ella recuerda que su entrenador le dijo que era natural en cuanto a las caídas, en cuanto a los bumps. Eh, todo fluía muy natural, pero sí recuerda su primer body slam y no fue nada positivo porque sí dolió. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit. You made your debut in your first pro wrestling match. So as a young Alison K, what was going through your mind when you were going through that curtain, seeing the people, seeing your opponent in the ring, the referee and everything, thinking I finally made it? For my very first match ever? Yes. I remember hating it. I hated, oh. <laughs> I hated it so much. And not the match. Well, I mean, the match was terrible because it was my first match. But I remember hating that feeling. I remember being behind the curtain and thinking, I don't want to go out there. Like, I don't have to go out there. I could just go home if I want to. Like, no one's going to make me go out there. But it was like such a dreadful feeling of just those. It wasn't even just butterflies. Those were like real true nerves. And it was almost making me sick. And um, the other girl and I had trained together. It was both of our first matches. So we just had a lot of like pressure, a lot of tension, a lot of nerves. Like I remember she cried after the match because we were just so like, it, it was just, it was a wonderful experience and a terrible experience all at the same time. But I do not miss that feeling. I still get butterflies. I get, I get like nervous, I guess, every time I wrestle, but it's not, it's not that feeling anymore. It's more like excitement now. And I get anxious to go out there. I get butterflies. Maybe a little bit of nerves, but not that feeling. That feeling is terrible. 
I'll translate that. Su primera lucha de toda fue contra una luchadora que tampoco había luchado. Era la primera lucha de ella también. Y recuerda que estaba extremadamente nerviosa, pero eran los nervios malos. Era como que este estrés, esta presión de que teníamos que hacerlo bien. No eran las mariposas, no eran las butterflies en el estómago. Eran eh, esos nervios de que tenías que hacerlo bien. Y recuerda que posterior a esa lucha, su oponente lloró porque era tanta carga emocional para ellas y ella no le gustó su primera lucha y no le gustó sentirse así. Actualmente ella sí se siente eh, esos nervios, vamos a decirlo de esa manera esas mariposas en el estómago al salir esa ansiedad, esa emoción de ver a los fanáticos, pero no extraña esa sensación de, de la primera lucha uh, fast forwarding a little bit in time, you got the opportunity to work for one of the most independent pro wrestling companies in the United States in terms of women's wrestling and that's Shimmer so uh, what do you remember of your first days in Shimmer, how was the backstage dynamic, how did you felt knowing that, hey, I'm here, I'm on Shimmer now uh, when I first started wrestling, I remember My first match was like the very end of 2008. So the next spring of 2009, I actually went to a Shimmer show. When I started wrestling, I didn't even know that independent wrestling was a thing. I didn't know women's wrestling promotions were a thing. So it was like, it just blew my mind. And I went to go watch a show and there's a picture of me somewhere where I'm sitting on the, in the audience. And I remember sitting in the audience and thinking like, I'm going to be on the other side of that guard row one day. And I did eventually get there, obviously. Um, But I remember my first experience in Shimmer, um, Cherry Bomb and I, also known as Allie, uh, she was driving through Canada going to Shimmer and she asked if I wanted to go with her because she was driving through Detroit. And we went, we ended up in a tag match for the Sparkle, the pre-show. And it was, <laughs> I feel like all my first experiences are not great. I always have like crazy stories, like, like things did not, besides the first bump, things did not necessarily come naturally for me. So I feel like I had a lot of struggle Um, sorry, I know this is a lot to translate. I feel like I'm talking a long oh, time. Just go on, I can take But, it. Um, so I remember uh, the Sparkle match, it went well, the match itself, but we went too long. We didn't understand like the timing and we only had 10 minutes. And I don't even think we were supposed to go 10 minutes, but eventually the time limit was supposed to be 10. So once we hit 10, they sent refs in the ring to get us out. So our match never finished. Like we were in the middle of wrestling. Like we, had, we were set up for the finish. The finish was about to happen but we had already overstayed our welcome. So they had to send refs out to be like, all right, get out of the <laughs> That's so embarrassing. I mean, now I feel like it, it doesn't feel as embarrassing now because I've done other things. But at the moment, that was like the worst feeling in the world. That was terrible. And I never went, oh, well, I can't say it, never, but I learned how to, how to make sure I don't go over time since then. I'll translate that. Su primera experiencia en Shiver tampoco fue buena. Ali fue la persona que la buscó a ella, que estaba guiando de Canadá, pasaba por Detroit para llegar al show de Shiver. Le dice, oye, yo te busco. Se montan, llegan las dos juntas aquella noche a Shiver y hacen el primer kickoff match o el preview match antes de eh, en Sparkle, como ya la me llama. Pero antes de eso ya no sabía lo que era lucha libre independiente. Ella no conocía nada. Simplemente un día se siente y dice, algún día yo voy a estar allí. Llega el momento de ella estar allí. Tienen máximo 10 minutos de lucha se pasan del tiempo y de momento envían los referees, los árbitros al cuadrilátero y las sacan. Le dicen ya, hasta aquí se acabó su lucha. Y es como que dice, wow, qué vergüenza. En mi primera lucha no sabíamos lo que era el timing, nos sacaron por, el, por pasarnos del tiempo. Y esa fue su primera experiencia en Shimmer. Y dice que después de eso aprendió lo que es timing y se aseguró que no vuelva a ocurrir, o que por lo menos asegurarse que hasta ahora no ha ocurrido nada más eso en, en su lucha. While being on Shimmer after that, not good experience, uh, <laughs> You went there and you stayed there for a while, but you worked with a pretty particular person and that's Kana, known today as Asuka. <laughs> so what do you remember of that day? <laughs> I feel like you're asking me about all my terrible experiences. No, I love Kana so much. I want to wrestle her again so bad. She is so amazing. And that was why I'm laughing because the day that I got my match against Kana, I didn't know it was coming until that day, um, which I should have been prepared anyway, but I, she's just so, so above my level, like so out of my league. And I was not ready. I was not ready for Asuka. <laughs> <laughs> so the match, I mean, the match, I got through it, but it was, um, I, I feel like I did not hold up my end of the bargain in that match. I could not keep up with her. Like, she's just so amazing. And now, because that was what, in like 2013 or something, I would love to wrestle her again and rectify that match. She's amazing. 
I'll translate that. Eh, ella dice que como que estás, Michael, estás preguntando de las preguntas que son experiencias negativas, pero no, son experiencias interesantes. Ella tuvo la oportunidad de estar con Kana, con Asuka hoy día, y ella dice como que, eh, yo no estaba lista para Asuka, I wasn't ready for Asuka en aquel momento dado. Ella quiere enfrentarse a ella ahora mismo para probarle el, su tiempo de evolución, pero pues en aquel momento no fue lo que, lo que ella esperaba porque no estaba lista para enfrentarse a un oponente tan tan talentosa y tan dada en aquel momento como Asuka, ya no estaban al mismo nivel, ahora Alison Kay ha cambiado mucho, ha evolucionado y ahora sí quiere enfrentarse a Asuka uh, you, you've done many things in your career, but one of them was Ring of Honor, so how did Alison Kay ended up getting the call to be on their show? So Ring of Honor I don't have a terrible story about <laughs> this <laughs> one actually went pretty well um, this, the first time was in 2012, I believe Um, and that was against Mischief. And I think it was their first women's match that they had in a long time. So um, I was very excited about that. Mischief was great. I remember that match going well. I liked that match. Um, I think I got the call because I was working with Shimmer and they wanted to start having women's matches again. Mischief was a big staple in Sh uh, Shimmer at that time. Um, and ROH and Shimmer were kind of hand in hand, uh, working more together, it felt. Uh, they had been before, but then there was a period where they didn't have a lot of, they had no women's matches for a long time. Um, and then right before I signed with Impact, I worked with them one more time. So I only worked for them twice so far. Uh, and that was for, I believe I did like a mixed tag match. I think um, Sarah Logan was in it. Um, it was like a six, I think a six person tag. But yeah, my experience there was, I didn't have any crazy, um, terrible stories. <laughs> that was, that one was fun. I'll translate that. If por primera vez entonces ya no tuvo una experiencia negativa en Ring of Honor, tuvo dos luchas con ellos y fue por el contacto que hizo a través de estando en Shimmer, esa exposición que la garantizó un espacio allá, eh, luchó ante Miss Chief y después luchó en un Six Women Tag Team Match eh, en donde estaba involucrada Sarah Logan dos veces antes de firmar con, con Impact o TNA y su experiencia fue, fue positiva You've done You've been traveling worldwide, UK, United States, Canada, but there's a particular place that calls our, our attention due to our market, and that's Mexico. You work there uh, with AAA. How was your experience working with AAA, the Mexican audience, and the whole uh, Lucha Libre experience for you? AAA treated us very well. I was only there for a short time, so I, that was for the Lucha World Cup in 2016, and I was representing uh, TNA Impact at the time, and I was on Team USA, with cheerleader Melissa and Santana Garrett. And um, I think we lost like the whole thing. I think we lost all of our matches, but um, I know we went against Team Mexico. I know we went, I believe we went against Team Canada as well. Um, I mean, I had a great time down there. I, it's, it's so interesting, the different types of audiences when you travel to different countries like Mexico versus Japan, they're so, the audience is just so different in how they react. Um, but I really enjoyed it. Like the, the Mexican fans were just always like loud and like, Um, playing the air horns, like the sirens and stuff. And I just, I love that type of energy. Like it just, it was fun to go out there. I'll translate that. Triple A la trató muy bien el tiempo que estuvo en México. Fue como parte del tour, eh, un tour corto de Team USA contra Team México, representando a Tenea. Junto a ella estaban cheerleader Melissa, que también fue Raisha Said, entre muchísimos otros personajes, y Santana Garrett, que hoy día está con NXT. Eh, la experiencia fue positiva. Y recuerda de México, el clásico, el público y la energía y el el air horn como ya menciona <risa> eh, y obviamente le gustó esa energía del, del público mexicano uh, as part of the places you've worked been you mentioned it already Japan UK uh, what was the principal difference uh, or the biggest challenge you face uh, while being exposed to the Japanese audience like it is completely silent that it may be uncomfortable sometimes you know the Japanese audience is are not always silent. I think that's like a generalization. A lot of times it will happen, but there are certain shows that I would either attend or certain shows that we would wrestle for where the audience was loud like the whole time. Um, especially, I want to say um, Big Japan, Big Japan Wrestling. I, they, I remember that audience being very rowdy, uh, much more rowdy than I thought they were going to be. And I mean, I, I love it over there. I love Japan. The biggest challenge in general was um, the language barrier <laughs> for sure trying to learn as much like Japanese, as many Japanese phrases as I could before I went over there, but it's a lot harder to retain than um, a Latin-based language like Spanish, English to Spanish, for example. 
Perfect, I'll translate that. Su experiencia en Japón fue positiva. Ella dice que no todo el tiempo el público está silente. Hay muchas veces que están, y le pasó un show de Big Japan, aplaudiendo durante todo el show y con una energía brutal. Eh, todo va a depender del tipo de show y del tipo de audiencia que sea. Pero su experiencia fue buena. La, la, la barrera más grande que se enfrentó fue el lenguaje, tratar de aprender la mayor cantidad de frases en japonés que podía, contrario tal vez a la experiencia en México, que era español e inglés, que ambas se derivan del de latín como tal. Uh, why did you decide, you know, to sign with TNA? How did that opportunity happen? Who gave you the call? And how do you feel at that moment? Um, I remember speaking with a producer. Uh, he messaged me probably at the end of 2015 and he had been watching my work and he was interested in bringing me in. Uh, Billy Corgan was actually running or at least working with Impact at the time. And um, yeah, they called me in for a tryout. I did the Knockouts Knockdown pay-per-view in 2016. I wrestled Gil Kim for my first match. And uh, right away, they were already putting me in sort of like a storyline. Like they had Maria out there and Maria was kind of like scouting me. And um, I did well, I guess, because they ended up hiring me and going with that storyline. And um, yeah, it was actually a producer, a producer that worked for Impact who had been watching my work and wanted me to come try out. I'll translate that. Fue un productor de Impact Wrestling que le da la llamada y le dice, ven acá, vamos a hacerte un tryout, muchacha. Le involucra, le gusta su trabajo, la pone en una historia que María constantemente estaba viendo, la ver qué ofrecía. Y su primera lucha fue con Gail Kim, which leads me actually to my next point winning the TNA Knockouts Championship, defeating none other than Gail Kim and Jade at Slammiversary. What do you feel when that referee counted three and that bell rang? That was such a bizarre feeling because I did not see that coming. Um, I was so new. I was still so new. I had, we had just gotten back from Mexico. Um, I remember the tapings prior, right before we went to Mexico, I hurt my knee. Uh, I was in a match with Gail. I was chasing her outside of the ring. I ended up, it's such a silly way to it, all, but whatever. I'm glad it was very minor, but I was chasing her outside the ring. I tripped, like I was, I had to hit her and I was really trying to, like she was just booking it. So I was really trying to catch her and I finally did, but I kind of like fell at the last minute, you know? And I hit my knee right off where the mats on the outside stops. So I hit my knee right on the concrete and um, I had a minor tear to my PCL. And I ended up working the rest of the tapings because I was, they were able to wrap it up for me and I did what I could. Um, but when I went to Mexico, you'll notice if you watch, watch it back that I was wearing a knee brace. So uh, I was able to wrestle with the knee brace on and I'm very grateful that it didn't take me out any time uh, or put me out on the sidelines for a long time because they obviously had plans for me. And I remember when I was going to Mexico, I think it was Madison Rain. She said, uh, make sure you be careful, please. Please don't get hurt. Please don't get hurt. And I think she knew that they wanted to, you know, that I was probably, things are probably going to go well for me if I, if I stayed injury free. And so, yeah, it was, it was a surprise. Um, and I was also, I, I don't know, just very happy, very happy, of course. Translate that. Eh, ella gana y derrota en una misma noche a Jade, hoy día Mia Jim, y a Gail Kim en una sola lucha en Slammiversary. Pero antes de eso, ella dice, obviamente fue un sentimiento bizarro, pero ella se lesionó una rodilla antes de eso. Ella estaba corriendo a Gail Kim, corriendo a Gail Kim, le intenta literalmente que esté casar. Cuando logra casarla, se lesiona una rodilla, un pequeño desgarre en el PCL, eh, porque su rodilla golpea el concreto. Ahí hace, entonces ocurre esa lesión. Eh, afortunadamente no pasó a mayores. Ella no tuvo que eh, irse un tiempo de los cuadriláteros ni nada, sino que pudo luchar con un knee brace, con una rodillera protectora. Por eso es que cuando ella llega a México, en su lucha, todo el mundo la llegó a ver si das para atrás con esa rodillera y fue por eso. En México, Madison Rain es la que le dice, por favor, no te lesiones, no te lesiones, no te lesiones, por favor, cuídate, vamos a tratar de cuidarte. Y es que ya Madison Rain sabía lo que venía y era que le iba a ganar el campeonato de las knockouts de TNA. Uh, you worked on the May Young Classic and to many of us that took us by surprise because we remember you from Impact like a few months ago. Uh, how did that opportunity happen and how was the experience working with WWE? So um, that was my first match back after being out for eight months. So I think, yeah, a lot of people were surprised, but um, because it was never announced that I wasn't with Impact anymore necessarily. I don't think I ever announced it. I don't really remember. But what happened was in January of 2018, I believe, um, I ended up with blood clots in my lungs from likely a medication I was taking. Um, and so I had to be on blood thinners for six months. So it was a very scary time. 
And uh, I didn't even know if I was going to be able to wrestle again because there was a possibility that I would have to be on blood thinners for the rest of my life. But fortunately, um, thank goodness, I don't have to do that anymore. And I was on the blood thinners for about six months. And so during that time, my contract with Impact expired and I just didn't sign a new one. WWE reached out, like it was just timing. So WWE reached out. Um, I hadn't really uh, made a decision or, or worked anything out with Impact. They wanted me to do the man classic. It sounded like fun. So I was available. And that was my very first match back. It was very, uh, uh, no pressure, no pressure, you know. (laughs) I'll translate that. Eh, Cuando ya aparece en WWE, lo que las pocas personas saben es que varios meses antes tenía lamentablemente una condición derivada por un medicamento que se tomó, que eran coágulos de sangre en sus pulmones, lo que podía ocasionar que su carrera acabara. Afortunadamente eso no ocurrió, se recuperó. En ese periodo de tiempo su contrato con Impact o TNA expiró, decidió no firmar ninguno y llega la llamada de WWE o el correo electrónico y le dicen queremos traerte para el Million Classic. Y ahí dice, suena divertido, voy a llegar allá. Y su primera lucha de regreso fue esa lucha en el Million Classic. Uh, you also work with NWA, which in my opinion is, uh, with all the respect of the, what you've done before, is the best work you've done in your career. Like I've saw the promos, uh, the energy you brought to the to the arena, that arena in, in Georgia was it was simply amazing. So how was that experience while working with NWA? Thank you. Um, I really enjoyed working with NWA. I We were having so much fun with everything that we were doing. And uh, it's unfortunate that it, kind of crumbled under the pressure of COVID, you know, I know they're back and doing things now, but we had such a, an amazing thing going in January of what, 2020, I guess. Yeah, it was January, 2020. And we, that last set of tapings was just so amazing. And, and uh, I had a great time working there because I felt like I really fit in with that style, a little more classic. Um, I'm not a flashy person. So I'm like, okay, this is, this is right up my alley. Um, I love focusing on promos and character and things like that. And they were very heavy on the promos, really pushing the fact that they have a lot of good talkers on the show. And so I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And we were having a blast. And I'm so sad that, I mean, of course, I'm so sad that COVID happened for a number of reasons. But one of the things that it destroyed was the roster that we had. I'll translate that. Eh, ella menciona que la experiencia con NWA fue positiva, era ese estilo old school en donde mostraba su agresividad, pero no eran tantas cosas, las promos se disfrutaban, todo era bueno y pues obviamente ella lamenta el COVID por muchos motivos, pero principalmente por el hecho de que destruyó el roster que tenía y las oportunidades que tenían en NWA, en ese roster, todo el mundo se complementaba y era excelente. I also want to say something else in Spanish. Pueden seguir a Alison Kay en todas sus redes sociales, Instagram, at Siena, S-I-E-N-N-A. Twitter, at Siena, de igual manera, S-I-E-N-N-A. Eh, Patreon.com slash Alison K, A-L-L-Y-S-I-N, Alison K-A-Y, Alison K, Patreon.com slash Alison K. Para fotos exclusivas, para sus rutinas de entrenamiento, para su dieta, para contenido exclusivo, Patreon.com slash Alison K es el lugar. Y para mercancía, Alison K.com, al igual que para todos los promotores que estén interesados una vez esta situación de la pandemia se detenga en Puerto Rico, en México, en Chile, Argentina, Ecuador, Panamá, Alison K.com para bookings, al igual que para mercancía y Pro Wrestling Tees.com slash Alison K. Eh, para todo tipo de t-shirt de, de su nueva carrera y de, de todo lo que ha estado haciendo en toda su carrera, progressingtees.com slash Alison K. It's been an absolute honor to have you here as your guest. And I wanted to close this interview with a dual question. And it's, we've seen what you've been doing in 2021 uh, and part of 2020, and that's uh, AEW and Bloodsport specifically. Uh, how did those opportunities happen and how do you felt working for both environments that are completely different? It's interesting that you ask about those two together because I feel like both of those opportunities came from like Twitter almost. Oh. So with Bloodsport, um, uh, Bloodsport had just happened. I think Josh Brennan's first one maybe. And because uh, Bloodsport had happened prior, but under like different people's names. And so I tweeted something about I want to do blood sport so I can butter bean these hoes. Like as a joke, kind of, <laughs> if you're familiar with butter bean, um, I know. you know, he would, uh, he got them hands. So I tweeted it out kind of as a joke, but I did want to do blood sport. I did want to wrestle that style, but I would, I'm not the type of person to like usually tweet out about wanting bookings. Like I'm more of a traditional um, send an email type of person or something like that. If I, if I were to do that. 
so that was kind it was in a, like a lighthearted manner but the promoter saw it and reached out to me and was like are you serious do you really want to wrestle it, uh this style and I'm like yeah so that's how that came about and then with AEW I had announced my release from NWA um that I was now a free agent and the next day I had an email from Christopher Daniels asking if I wanted to wrestle for, for the pay-per-view <laughs> that all happened so fast. It was it like fast. it within a week, it had already, like, I lost, uh, not even lost a job. Cause it was more of like a mutual, um, parting, but I had now left a contract, got an opportunity at AEW and then it like happened. And then I'm like back in my house in like five days, all in five days. I'm just like, did that even really happen? <laughs> I'll translate that. Eh, las experiencias con AEW y Bloodsport fueron positivas, pero ocurrieron ambas por Twitter prácticamente. Bloodsport, ella dice como que, el, recuerden el boxeador Butterbean, eh, ella dice como que, ah, quiero eh, eh, ser el Butterbean contra estas personas, por no decir la palabra, que quería golpearlas, pero lo dijo en modo de broma, y es la persona que envió un email si le interesa algo. Y por ese tweet la contrataron para Bloodsport. Eh, y la segunda cosa fue para AEW. En AEW, ella anunció que recientemente había dejado o había terminado su contrato con el WA, y rápido, al otro día, tenía un correo electrónico, un email de Christopher Daniels, diciéndole, oye, llega la KIW, muchachita, que te queremos acá, y él dice como que, pues, perdí, no perdí un trabajo, me dice, sino que fue, eh, terminó un contrato, y rápido ya tenía encima de su mesa otro que eh, tuvo esa fortuna, y todo eso como en cinco días para volver a la casa, fue todo demasiado rápido. Uh, Allison, it's been an absolute honor to have you here as our guest always wishing you success in your career uh and in your personal life as well and we thank, thank you, you so much for your time thank you so much for having me it's been a pleasure y sigan pendientes a Lucha Libre Online este fueron Alison Kay y Michael Morales para Lucha Libre Online la marca número uno de Pro Wrestling y Combat Sports en español <laughs>